Traditionally, wort is boiled for exactly 60 minutes, unless you're making a lager, in which case best boil for 90 minutes to make sure you've driven off DMS. But how does this convention hold up to testing? We're taking a look at three experiments, comparing a pale ale boiled for 30 and 60 minutes, a Kolsch with 30 and 90 minute boils, and a Scottish Heavy with a one hour or three hour boil. Can participants distinguish beers based on boil length alone? Let's find out. This episode is sponsored by More Beer. More on them in a bit. If left to my own devices, meaning I'm not brewing a brewlosophy beer for data collection that has some predefined standards, I am an unabashed, short and shoddy brewer. As I work my way through the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beer styles, one per week. I quickly moved from 60 minute and 90 minute boils to 30 minute ones. I didn't notice any reduction in the quality of my brews, but boy, I sure did notice the time reduction in my weekly brew days. So I stuck with it. So why is it that traditional brewing practices state we should boil for 60 minutes? Or if we're using a large percentage of Pilsner malt, that 90 minutes is preferable? Well, there are some good reasons, and probably the most common you'll hear is for DMS reduction. If you've tasted a beer with high levels of DMS, you'll probably find yourself looking to avoid it in future at all costs. Now, different people perceive DMS in different ways, but it's commonly referred to as bringing flavors of cooked corn or cabbage. DMS is a compound that's formed from the decomposition of SMM, which is present in malt. And during the boil, DMS is volatized and driven off with the steam. Boil for long enough, and most of the DMS is evaporated and does not remain in the wort. And traditionally, long enough has been 60 minutes. Pilsner malt has higher levels of SMM, the precursor to DMS, because it's kilned at lower temperature, hence the recommendation to boil for 90 minutes to ensure the DMS compounds are boiled away. Now, a second reason is protein coagulation. During the boil, proteins and tannins present in the wort coagulate and form large particles known as hot break, reducing proteins and tannins in the wort. So the longer you boil, the more thorough the protein coagulation, purportedly resulting in a clearer beer with reduced haze and potentially a cleaner taste. And anecdotally, I have noticed that my 30 minute boiled beers do tend to maintain a bit more haze than my longer boils if I don't introduce a fining step. Now, another reason is hop utilization. The longer the boil, the more time the alpha acids from the hops are as summarized and dissolved into the wort to impart bitterness. If you boil for less time, you're gonna need to use more hops to reach a same level of bitterness. It's easily accounted for in brewing software calculations, but it's something you'll need to keep in mind. And then there's the Maillard reaction, which is responsible for producing a wide range of flavor compounds and brown coloration in food and beverages, including beer. It's a complex series of chemical reactions between amino acids and reducing sugars that occur when wort is heated during the boil. It generates a variety of melanoidins and other compounds that can add depth and complexity to the malt flavor, as well as the darkening of the wort. But at a practical level, how detectable is any of this in a beer? Let's get into the experiments, starting with an American pale ale, where the purpose is to evaluate the impact a 30 minute boil has when compared to a beer of the same recipe undergoing a more conventional 60 minute boil. Marshall Schott put together a recipe for a 4.4% sessionable pale ale, aggressively hopped with Amarillo. Marshall brewed two batches, collecting about half a gallon less brewing liquor for the 30 minute boil batch to compensate for the reduced evaporation loss. That resulted in both beers hitting the exact same OG of 1.049 right on target. Each batch was moved to a carboy, yeast was pitched, and within 12 hours, both beers were actively fermenting. So far, there were no visual differences between the beers, and that remained the case as both beers clocked similar finishing gravities, at which point they were racked to kegs and came out with similar color and clarity when carbonated and poured into tasting glasses. But could blinded participants tell them apart? A total of 24 people participated in a triangle test where each taster was presented with two samples of the 60 minute boil beer and one sample of the 30 minute boil beer in different colored cups. To reach statistical significance, 13 participants would have had to correctly identify the beer that was different and a total of just nine did. Participants 
could not reliably tell these beers apart. So that's an interesting finding, but this was a hop forward beer with only a 30 minute delta in boil length. So what if we cranked up the boil delta and picked a style with SMM laden Pilsner malt? Well, before we get to that, a quick word on today's sponsor, More Beer. More Beer's slogan is absolutely everything for beer making, and it's easy to see why given their selection of over 8,000 products. Like the Brewbuilt X3 Uniconical Stainless Steel Fermenter, or the Comos series of kegerators that give you everything you need to get started with dispensing and serving your homebrew. And for quality fermentations, More Beer carries cellar science yeast and nutrients. More Beer offer free shipping on most orders over $59, also, be sure to check out their awesome YouTube channel featuring brewing tips, hijinks, and incredible giveaways. Check out everything More Beer has to offer at morebeer.com. Now, the purpose of the next experiment was to evaluate the differences between a 30-minute boil and a 90-minute boil in beers produced from the same, mostly Pilsner malt, grain bill, and otherwise treated exactly the same. While 90 minutes has long been the standard for beers brewed with Pilsner malt, an argument exists that doing so for the purposes of driving off DMS is, well, a bit outdated given today's highly modified malts. After all, we're not looking to produce a beer with the lowest amount of DMS possible, just a beer with the amount of DMS being below the threshold of detection by tasters. So Marshall Schott designed a recipe consisting of nearly 93% German Pils malt and used two kettles to brew two batches. The 90 minute boil batch had one gallon more water to account for higher boil off rates. Marshall performed the two boils, adding hops to both batches at 30 minutes and 10 minutes. Once the boils were complete, he transferred the wort to two fermenters, added yeast, and was soon seeing signs of fermentation. When fermentation was complete, Marshall performed a diacetyl rest, then took gravity readings to see both batches had reached approximately the same final gravity. He proceeded to cold crash the beers, fine with gelatin, and rack to kegs. Now, looking at the finished beers, they appeared much the same, with perhaps the short boil beer ever so slightly lighter than the long boil beer. Maybe the Maillard reaction in effect, perhaps? Anyway, the beers were presented to a panel of 18 participants who were served one sample from the 90 minute boil batch and two samples from the 30 minute boil batch. At this sample size, 10 tasters would be required to accurately identify the odd bit out for statistical significance, but only six made the accurate selection, indicating participants again could not reliably distinguish the beers. Marshall also noted that not a single person reported perceiving anything close to DMS in either beer. Now, since evaporation rates are generally fairly consistent and not linearly related to volume, it does stand to reason that less DMS would be driven off during a 90 minute boil, thereby increasing the risk of DMS in the finished beer. But in this one data point, well, it appears enough DMS was boiled off during that time to remain below a detectable threshold. And I have to say, in all of my 30 minute boils, no matter the malt bill, I've just not noticed detectable levels of DMS in any of my beers. But long boils aren't just about driving off DMS. Many traditional Scottish breweries boil wort for two hours or more to encourage Maillard reactions that are believed to add depth of malt character and a darker color in the final beer. If you're looking for the full, rich caramel flavors found in styles like barley wine or Scottish style ale, a longer boil might be for you. So former Brewlosophy contributor Matt Del Fiaco wanted to test this out with a Scottish Heavy, where the purpose was to evaluate the differences between a 60 minute boil and a 180 minute boil in otherwise similar beers. Yeah, three hours. My hat goes off to you, Matt. I just would not have the patience. Matt put together a recipe consisting of the wonderful Golden Promise malt with a splash of medium crystal and set about mashing two batches, once again accounting for boil off rate. The 180 minute batch was left boiling for two hours before both batches received their one and only hop addition of EKG as 60 minutes. Hydrometer measurements revealed both worts hit their 1.040 OG target. The beers were racked to two fermentation kegs and finished at the same FG of 1.012. The beers were pressure transferred to serving kegs and ready to serve to tasters. Now, notably color-wise, these beers look, well, identical. 
A total of 22 participants took our triangle test, receiving two samples of the 60-minute boil beer and one sample of the 180-minute boil beer. At this sample size, a total of 12 correct selections would have been required to achieve statistical significance, but only 10 tasters chose the odd beer out, indicating tasters were not able to reliably distinguish the beers. So, three experiments, all coming back non-significant. As long as differences in boil-off rate are accounted for, there just didn't seem to be any perceptible impact regardless of boil length, which is not to say boil length doesn't matter, but it did not result in perceptible differences across these three data points. And this is very much in keeping with my own experience as well. But what about you? What is your standard boil duration? And do you vary boil times based upon different styles? Let me know in the comments. So that's boil length. But what about the traditional 60 minute mash? To see the impact of different mash rests, watch this video here.